There are certain individuals that simply radiate humanity. They exist with an energy deeply rooted from and grounded within healthy spiritual values. And those, when coupled with the creative drive, culminate into a beautiful harmonic sense of being. Esteban Fernandez, aka DJ Esteban, is one of those individuals. Someone I'm happy to call a friend and a part of the vertical family. I'll be pouring some beautiful wine as we get into some deep, meaningful conversation. Let's dive in. Welcome, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you My so much. My pleasure. My Thank pleasure. You. Seriously, um, appreciate your time. Sure. Appreciate you just um, taking a minute to, to have a little fireside chat. Yes, sir. We'll add fire later. <laughs> What? Yeah, no worries. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be fire. Just as beautiful without it. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, we're talking about music, and yeah. we're talking about you. So first and foremost, um, let's let people know who you are, um, where'd you come from, and why you're here. Wow. Well, my name is Esteban Fernandez, called by DJ Esteban. Originally from New Jersey born and raised in Newark and currently living in Los Angeles uh, actually it'll be 10 years this year so the milestone so yeah here we are you know and uh, trying to uh, spread love through the music you know make connections and just uh, yeah just do what I love you know and just sharing music and being a part of you know the culture here in LA which is you know still very new to me so yeah yeah well 10 years in for sure I mean it it sounds like a long haul a decade but Los Angeles is one of those juggernauts on the planet that it yeah. really takes a little more than than 10 years to really plant roots right and get it yeah. you know I've I've been here for 44 years there you go but I think I've been conscious of it for maybe 38 if you will. Okay. And um, it's, a, it's an interesting place to be, you know, which brings me like to the first question I want to ask you. Because when I think of Newark, New Jersey, the first thing that comes to my mind is Red Man. I'm a hip hop, oh. I'm a hip hop head. Yeah. You know, and when I think about New Jersey, I don't think about house music really, but I don't know. I didn't grow up right. in New Jersey. Tell me, um, what was the presence of house music in New Jersey and how did you find your path to house music? Wow. Um, my earliest recollection I would have to say is just listening to the radio. Uh, KISS FM, 98.7 KISS FM, 107.5 uh, WBLS we used to have uh, mixed shows. And I remember... I think everybody in New York knows WBLS, man. Okay. So I used to record uh, sets from Tony Humphreys. Okay. So that's my kind of early introduction to the to house music. Um, prior to that, you know, just grew up in the 80s. So MTV, you know, listening to all the, you know, just all the rock and whatever was coming out, you know, yep. New Wave. And so I... Just grew up with music. My dad is a musician. Uh, he played percussion. Was in a band, local band uh, in Jersey. Um, my uncle, as well as a musician, you know, he traveled as a uh, percussionist, Brazil and Europe and Paris. And so, my background is music. You yeah. know, growing up in a home, you know. But for house music, it was you know listening to the radio. I would say I was like maybe ten years old, something like that, eleven. And then that's kind of the start for me as far as house music. With that much music in your family, it begs me to ask, like, wh wh where's your family from? At least that, I guess that, that generation above, you know, your parents, your uncles, like, where, where's your family from? Yeah, they're all from uh, Uruguay, South America, yeah. which is a small little country near Argentina by Brazil. And um, yeah, they came to New York in the 70s uh, my dad. Wow, probably one of the best 
funkiest times to like arrive in New York. Right? Yeah, I mean, I hear stories that my dad, when they first got here, they would take my mom, go to New York and check out Fania All Stars and all the Latin bands that were out at that time, and yep. you know, just entrenched in that kind of you know element. Yeah. You know, and so, and that was kind of the stuff that was playing in the house, you know, yep. growing up. So. It's that Latin vibe, which you probably hear in my sets, and my, you know, is you know comes from there. Mm -hmm. You know, the roots of that is percussion and you know Latin and that type of vibe. And your so. set, your sets are beautiful. We'll get to that a little bit later, but nice. you know, we're we're gonna ease up into that, man. But obviously, with that kind of musical upbringing, about what age were you when you started listening to those those mix shows, Tony Humphreys and everything. Yeah, I think I was, I mean, if I can remember, maybe like in eighth grade. So I must have been like 12, yeah. maybe 13, Yeah. you know? And, uh, you know, then years later, like after I moved out of uh, Newark, I moved to the suburbs, to Union, New Jersey. And that's when I started really going into New York. It was a Thursday, Friday, Saturday type of thing for me, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, I was into raves at one point, you know, going to techno and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And my first real experience with the Soulful House was uh, uh, a party at a club called uh, Sound, Sound Factory Bar with Louis Vega. And I remember vividly walking into that place for the first time. Um, I was invited from, you know, by a friend's cousin who was into that, you know, scene. And just really seeing the dancers. You know, the first thing I walked into was all oh, these nice, you know, beautiful dancers just dancing to this music. And I was like, yeah. wow. I'm like, the music. In rhythm, yeah, too. Like, I mean, just, just not line dancing, but just no, they in were, sync, though. They like, were just, twirling and yep. spinning <laughs> and grooving and just the, the, the imagery, you know. And I'm like, this music is making these people do this. This kind like, of fluid behavior. Oh, uh, it was. It, and then just the vibe in general. Just everyone was just friendly and just, uh, you know, really like down to earth and I was like I was hooked after that and then soon after that what really you know started uh, how I started really like DJing and playing music was going to Body and Soul with Joe Closal and Francois K and Danny Crivet like that party that Sunday afternoon party was just like yeah you know that was it and we're talking about legends here you know for, yeah, those, for people that that are watching right now that may not know I mean this is legendary stuff that we're talking about. Yeah, and to be a part of that, you know, yeah, just to absolutely. say that I was actually there, there like, right. you know. And at the time, you know, it was just a party that I enjoyed going to. But and I'll tell you, as back, someone that's born and raised here in Los Angeles, I'm envious of that, you know, because I feel like, man, to have that, knowing that, you know, with the history that I have with house music and growing up, at an early point and getting at least familiar with it at a very early stage um, and then knowing who these originators were and not being able, being able to uh, have the means of connectivity to be there I'm just like wow what that must have been like uh, like I said I'm, I'm envious you know yeah, well I, would, yeah. I won't say envious because I think that's a dirty word but I mean I, I feel like there's a, there's a sense of, of wonder you know mm. that I have with me I'm like man I just I could only imagine, you know, so yeah. it, it, that's a special time. You it know? was, yeah, definitely. I always tap into those moments and memories, you know, when I play out now and I just think about like what these guys did, you know, and how they played and just, the, you know, whether there was 20 people in the room or 200 people in the room, the passion that they had was just, you know, it was just addictive, you know, yep. and, and you yep. can see it, you can feel it. And uh, that's what it was about, it was about the music. At that young age, because um, you're saying probably about 13 or so, then you're moving into maybe about 16 or so 17, as we're yeah. 17 as we're moving into it, like starting to go to these events. Um, what was the consensus of other kids at the same age at that same time with their understanding or appreciation of house music within your neighborhood? Like, was there a lot of people in your neighborhood that were actually really into it or was it people coming from everywhere or how what was that like it was just a couple of guys from high school that I connected with musically um, you know there was a point where um, myself and two other guys created this little group called synergies groove where we would just bring our percussion my dad had all the percussion stuff yeah so it was we just I would just take those to my friend's house we would just jam one of them will, will do recite poetry so we'll just go to coffee houses you know and just kind of play and 
and be out there and, and then on the weekends we'll just go to new york you know because that was just the place to be you know so you guys were playing music even well yeah we were just yeah. playing around you know it wasn't something that we just just had fun you know, yeah. we enjoyed doing it you know and so and that led to uh, a couple of places in jersey where there was djs and house music we would go there and play percussion with the dj mm -hmm. and so that created like another Thing for us to do on the weekends and you know we would bounce around and then this DJ would want to you know book us and we would play with them and then we would start going into the city and do some stuff as well and so yeah I mean I was really fortunate to be able to really live 25 minutes drive from my home to the Holland Tunnel yeah you know and we would yeah. just go to all I mean because it was every night of the week you can you can go somewhere Something. you know and it was yeah. always like different it was not, not always so for house parties it was all you know these just underground places yep. or places that you just needed to be on the list or you needed to do this so, so i experienced all levels of the nightlife at that time los angeles had had a very similar perspective or a similar template where there is these events going on everywhere they're kind of scattered and you knew kind of where to go you know on different nights of the week whether it was a tuesday mm -hmm. wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday you know and even a monday i mean it, yep. it, it became like a seven day thing but you just kind of knew and you were also looking for more connectivity to that because once you get bit by that bug it's like yeah, it's... my god this music this experience these these this category of, of people yeah. it's not found anywhere else no i mean i think about that saying the house is a feeling yep. right you know or you know the, the song that says house is a spiritual thing a body thing a soul thing i mean that's where i come from like mm -hmm. it's not about you know the ego it's not about being seen it's always been about the music and connecting with people with the dancers or just people in general just connecting you know musically and, mm -hmm. and then the relationships that form after that you know because there is a communication going on when you're DJing and then there's people out there on the floor or just listening but then afterwards you have an opportunity to you know to talk with them and hang out with them and and create you know and form friendships which Absolutely. is at what point did you really start thinking that I want to be an orchestrator of this music. I want to start playing because I feel like your sound was already defined. Yeah. Just based upon your household, where you grew up, you know, your childhood and what was happening there. So at the core, I think you understood like a good sense of, of just human music and hearing it interpreted into like this level of like electronic dance music was special. At what point did you decide that, hey, I want to I want to throw my hat in the ring and and get down. Yeah, I think it was a slow process. I think the first time I actually got myself on turntables was at a friend's house. His name was Joe Giuliano, and uh, he had. Are you still friends today? Uh, no, but if we ran into each other, we would definitely hug it out, you know. And, yes, sir. You yes, know, sir. but uh, thank you no, know, thanks to him, like he would let me come to his place. He had equipment in his garage. He's like, yeah, come over whenever. He had all the records, and at that time it was freestyle music you know so i was just playing around at his place and then eventually i wound up getting my own turntables and then he stopped djing he didn't want to do it anymore he gave me all his records oh wow so i was like cool so i would just you know practice and was the of the year about Ooh, i must have been around yeah still high school so 17 18 at, around there so um, you're getting a lot of like that um maybe mid late 80s disco stuff you know yeah, all that freestyle that. stuff all the yeah. old school yeah, you know yeah. house stuff you yep. know the you know um uh, todd terry yep. like all his records yep. and you know a lot of vega records mm -hmm. and stuff like that mm -hmm. and so it was it was great you know just to experiment and to play all these wow. you know these this music what a gift yeah you know wow. and then after later on in high school another friend of mine this is when you know cd started to come up be a, a thing uh, his name is mark and rest in peace you know he passed away but he would let me come to his house he had the cd you know set up and he's like yeah just come over whatever and i would just bring my cds and make tapes and you know like these these people were really you know uh, a big part of you know, yeah of course because if it wasn't for them i wouldn't have been able to do all these you know, things and so i'm really grateful for that and um, it wasn't until like in my 20s where I really started taking it seriously and playing at lounges and then started playing at clubs and then started my own parties and then it just kind of you know, developed from there, evolved from there. 
What was the reception like? I'm assuming you were playing around Jersey. Yeah, I was playing in Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had a couple of gigs in, in New York here and there, like guest spots and stuff like that. Mm. But my residencies were in Jersey. Give me a year time frame, and what was the reception like around that time? Mm, I would say probably 2000s. Um, I would say there was a couple of parties that we did in Newark. We actually wanted up going back to Newark okay. and starting uh, a couple of parties. Uh, one was called Deep and Sexy, and then another one was called uh, Soul Deep. Same place, different, you know, people, different partners, mm -hmm. but uh, kept it in, you know, in Newark. And that was, nice. that was a Wednesday night, and yeah, it was just beautiful. And then I, I did a, a place in New Brunswick, which was kind of South Jersey. Uh, this place called Perlay and then Glow Lounge, and that's kind of built, you know, friends there in a different, yep. you know, city. Yep. So it was, it was really nice to have, be able to be the one to invite guests to my spot. You know what I mean? Well, I think because as a DJ, I mean, we, um, we always, I think there's a responsibility that we have, mm -hmm. and we, we cherish that responsibility. So to be the ones that are actually the, almost the protectors. Yeah. of some of this music and being able to share it in special places i think that's kind of going into what mm. you're saying right now yeah you know? yeah it felt good just kind of yeah and just to have people and and um, you know in those areas especially when i was doing south jersey it wasn't a really uh it was more commercial mm -hmm. but to be able to play underground soulful house music afro house afro latin music you know it was an opportunity to educate people mm -hmm. to a new sound mm -hmm. which you know some people dug it and some people was like, oh, I don't understand it. Sure. You know, but, you know, shout out to the owners of these places that allowed me to, hey, just, you know, yep. do your thing. Press. You know, yep. and so that was, that was, that was huge. Nice. As well. Um, and now were, were there other things going on, you know, outside of the things that you guys were doing in Jersey at that time? Because we're talking like, like you said, early 2000s, mid 2000s, yeah. maybe the early aughts. Um, I think about where Los Angeles was at that time and electronic music, electronic dance music specifically, um, had really dominated media, films, you look at The Matrix, you look at so many movies around that came out around that time, there was like a color theme and like lounges and hotels were designed around this almost dance club, electronic music vibe aesthetic. You know, it had like kind of dominated for a minute. You know, every place was clamoring to have electronic dance music DJs playing at their space at yeah. any given night. I mean, it was almost like I said, it was it was a hotbed. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Something was going on somewhere every yeah. night, and it wasn't just somebody just playing stuff in the background. It was like actually an event. Yeah. Right? It was it was something that people were attending. I don't know how we all even paid our bills back then because we were all out just about <laughs> every night, right? Yeah. You know, but yeah. at the same token, that just shows where the the presence of this scene and the, this music had had ascended to at that time, at least here on the West Coast. Um, I'm curious if was that the case over there in Jersey at that time? Was it just like popping off everywhere? Or yeah, in Jersey, no. I mean. There was a there was a bit of a break that I took, kind of around '99 into 2000, uh, where I actually left Jersey, and I went to Miami. Um, had an opportunity to go out there, and I ended up living out there for three years. Nice. And when I did go well, out, how there, old were you at this time? Uh, I was like maybe 23, 24, early, early to mid 20s. Yeah. And so it was really my first experience outside of, you know, Jersey, Jersey you know, yeah. and living somewhere else, you know, and I loved it. You know, I fell in love with it. I was able to land a gig at this place called Nikki Beach, which was at that time huge. And now they have them all over the place. But yep. I, I, I was actually to play, was actually able to play this whole summer for someone who was actually, I was covering for him. And he asked me if I can cover for him and nice. you know, take over. And that was a great experience because now you have people from Europe, all over the world kind of coming to this Sunday afternoon party that was just well Instantly known. Instantly global. Yeah. Instantly global. You know? And so that experience was just like awesome because 
you know, as much as I love to play music to house heads, you know, because they really get, get to understand uh, what I play, you know, now you have these Europeans, you know, kind of listening to this music and bopping and dancing yep. and yep. having a good time. So it's like, it just kind of opened up my mind and, and like, oh, wow, like I can, you know, this is a global thing. It's not just a Jersey thing or a New York thing. Right. You know, it's just, this thing can affect people in a certain way wherever you go. You know? And I love that because when you think about it, music is global. I mean, it's just like food, you know, <laughs> we, yeah. all, we all need it. And um, when you look at the, um, the impact that this music, this sound that came basically from America, came from Detroit, came from Chicago, um, came from New York, a little bit of it came from the West Coast, but this music is born here. And to see the impact that it has oh, on the rest of the world, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, pretty, it's pretty impactful and pretty impressive. And to, this is why I say us, those of us that choose to hold the mantle to um, take the responsibility of this, to be gatekeepers of it, yeah. it's a special thing. You know, down to our music selections, down to you know how we even conduct ourselves within the scene and make sure people feel the way they should feel make sure they feel the way we felt yeah. when we first experienced it you know exactly for those that might be new to it so i mean that's a very special special place that you were in at that time yeah. to where to to have that you know basically a residency at that point yeah at nikki beach man. yeah like, that was that was <laughs> that was a good time it was nice. a good time man and now I think as we get older, you know, now we're looking for people to kind of hand the baton over to, right? And yep. to carry this thing forward, you know. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> but. It was, well, it was nice because, you know, I went, when I went back to Jersey recently. I ain't dead yet. <laughs> and I just recently got back from Jersey and I was able to play at this uh, event called Listen and Move. Uh, these guys, uh, shout out to Daniel and Mikael, they, uh, they rent out this dance studio um, and shout out to B-Boy Irv, he's also another uh, cat. Now these guys were there when I used to play in Jersey. These guys would come and dance nice. and, and, you know, and, and now they're hosting and they're, now they're DJing and now they're doing Full this circle, thing. Man. Exactly. So to, to go back to that yeah, and yeah. to be kind of welcomed back was into... Was that the video you just posted? Yeah. Because yeah. I, I was looking at the dancers there, I was like, man, these look like B-Boys <laughs> up in here, man. Like. They're originally, yeah, they're originally yeah, breakdancers, yeah. you know, Perfect, and so, man. and just to see them kind of like still in it and still have this passion for it and still yep. like, you know, like even to the point where they just thanked me for like, you know, being able to expose them to this music and stuff like that, you know, it was just like, it's nice to see that, that they're pushing it forward, yep. you know, and so that's, it was a blessing to really see that. Yeah. I want to fast forward just a little bit because I think we've established that, that love and that passion for this music is is obvious. I want to fast forward just a little bit into your, your transition from Jersey because I feel like we're what we're talking about now is a stage where you have kind of really cemented at least your passion for being a DJ mm -hmm. and wanting to like live and play for this music. When you decided to make your trek to the West Coast and come to LA and developed the brand Milk and Honey Music or which came first? Was Milk and Honey Music already developed or you know how did tell me about that how did that happen? <clears throat> Milk and Honey Music was uh, was an idea before I came out to Jersey um, with two friends of mine Doug Ramones and DJ MT um, what we shared in common was our faith you know, we're, we're believers. I see DJ MT in the in the chats all yeah, the time, yeah, man. He's my and he, uh, I, I don't know if DJ MT is a he or a she. It's a he. But okay, but he seems very cool. Yeah, you know, he is very cool. Yeah, okay. And he's <laughs> you know he's been a supporter you know of mine since day one. He's an, he's an awesome DJ himself. Nice. Um, and so just you know we shared our faith and we're just kind of come talking and that was the original Milk and Honey music it was us three. Um, you know, we were planning on like developing a website and you know because it's actually the term comes from the bible in the old testament i was going to get know? into that yeah. and you're, you're 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 going ahead of me right <laughs> now and I, I, this is how you know we don't have any show planning or anything yeah, no, this, this is, is not scripted you know no. but obviously as as a christian myself knowing that you know milk and honey comes from the scriptures yeah. 
already know that's that's what branded you. Yeah. But yeah. keep going, man. Keep yeah. going. Yeah, I mean, and so the thought of, you know, going to a land of milk and honey, you know, that's what I thought about with the music. You know, I want to take people on a journey to a land of milk and honey, you know, and my thought always was when I'm DJing is that I want people to feel better when they leave than they did coming in, mm -hmm. you know, because we all go through struggles, we all go through things. And so, and music is powerful, it's healing and, it's, you know, music has a message to it. If you listen to it, some of the, you know, some of the soulful stuff, you know, I, I really, I really gravitate towards. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, you know, that's, that was Milk and Honey. We never... So it, this was a concept yeah. before you even left Jersey. Yeah, yeah. And then and never, nothing ever came out of it. But it's still here. But yeah, so when I came out here, I was like, you know, I'm just going to do this, yeah. you know, and I took it, you know, I spoke to them. I'm like, yo, I'm going to do this. They're like, yeah, go for it, man. Like, you know, we support you, whatever. So this is about 2011, 2012, you land in L.A. Yep. For me, when, when I first saw the brand, for me, it, it's recognizable immediately because, again, through scripture, you, you read about the land of milk and honey. We, we know what that means. And to have that that connotation to someone that is playing the music that I love as well, obviously my, my sensory, mm. you know, uh, re receptors just, just are on fire. I'm like, okay, well, this is a good thing. <laughs> you know, let's see what this is about. Yeah. And um, I, I appreciate the fact that you see the value and the importance of, of incorporating that into your own brand. And I won't even ask why you do it, because the reason is obvious, but let's let's talk a little bit more about when you landed here in LA, and then once you got here, what were your, what were your first, I guess, kind of moves that you made to kind of get this brand moving? Yeah, I think I started doing the online DJing stuff, mm -hmm. you know, I think, started kind of playing music online um, you know I think this year celebrate seven years of Milk and Honey Music Sessions on MixLR um, and that's so, amazing yeah so the, that's, that's the a beautiful track record man yeah it's all about consistency and you know I'm going to be switching you know, as you know mm -hmm. uh, in June from Saturdays to Thursdays just freeing up my Saturdays and you know shout out to my beautiful wife Nicolette for putting up with these Saturdays, you know, she, mornings she's, and she's just as much responsible for the success <laughs> totally and the longevity. You know, yeah, I appreciate yeah. her and yeah. her prayers and her support. And so yep. having a, uh, a beautiful wife behind you to like help the brand grow. Done yeah, deal. It's, yeah. And then, you know, just research like who's doing what in L.A., what parties can I go to? And, you know, you know it's just trial and error, you know, like mm -hmm. going to different places, trying to meet different people. And I have to shout out uh, David Montoya, uh, one of the first guys I met when I came out here. Mm -hmm. uh, he was kind enough to allow me to play some percussion on some of his tracks, and uh, we just developed a friendship over the years. And now you see him; he's just you know taking off. You know, and David's like one of those guys, man. Just obviously, you know, he he's been very very significant with yeah. the consistency of like just just making sure this sound. Yeah. As we talk about like Afro house, Afro Latin house, yeah. tribal house has been present, at yeah. least here in Los Angeles, man. And, and through like, him, I was able to meet some people, Jose Marquez, and, yep. um, you know, and then just little by little, you know, just kind of, and I'm very, you know, getting married and having a, that and working full time, you know, and, and yep. you know, I've, I've become very selective yep. on who I, who I go see, who I hang out with. And you know, so it's, that's why I think it's been, it's taken so long. You know to get to where i'm at now but um then meeting you and like things are starting to kind of really you know pick up you know well you know slow and steady right slow and steady i'm creole yeah. i slow cook man you know we, we put a we put a bunch of stuff in one pot exactly and we say okay chill wait yeah and just let it let it simmer so it's been you know <laughs> another cool thing about being out here was i was able to hook up with a promoter in hawaii she does uh soulgasm hawaii yeah. And I've been able to go out there and play, uh, for, you know, once a, once every couple of years or once a year for a while. And hopefully I'll be able to go back again next year. And they've opened up their arms and really been really great with me. And, and so, like, those things I cherish, you know, because they're far and few in between. But when they're solid, 
you know, it's it's more than just the music. It's more than just going out there. It's, we're a family now, you know. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at now. I'm, you know, like I said, like I'm very selective, but like if I do something, I want to do it. You know wholeheartedly not because i have to or because it's because i get to you know so you are a um a transplant here in la i think that has a bad connotation sometimes mm -hmm. for us natives but you know los angeles gets a bad rap for some of the disgusting personalities that you encounter here mm -hmm. because you know you, you run into a lot of superficial people however i feel that the superficial people and those disgusting be behaviors that are here are people that aren't really from here. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. and as a transplant to LA, someone that isn't that at all, um, you know, what, what's your take on that in terms of like, hey, I'm coming here for a reason because I feel like there's something, you could have gone anywhere. Y you didn't have to come to LA from Jersey. You could have gone anywhere. But for some reason, LA was your attraction factor. And you said, hey, there's something valuable there that I feel like makes sense for me. What do, you, what do you feel about that? Coming to L.A. wasn't my choice. Coming to L.A. was because my wife... The wind just blew you here? No, my wife, uh, her job <laughs> transferred her out here. I think it's funnier if the wind just blew you here. <laughs> well, it kind of felt like it because, you know, it was, we're leaving the winter behind and coming here, you know, to this beautiful weather. So when she said, you know, there's an opportunity to go out to L.A., do you want to go? Yeah. I mean, I said yes sure. right away. Sure. Because I've been out here before. I visited. I've had friends here. Uh, from when you Jersey. came out here before, when it, where did you go? I'm just curious. Uh, Marina Del Rey had a friend over there. Yep. Um, so that was basically that was like our yep meeting yep. spot, and then Sweet. other friends I stayed and with. Just kind of explore from there. Yeah, and then yep. so when I first came when I came out here, I was like, yeah, I mean, I could see myself coming out here, you know more and living out here yep and uh, i'm a palm trees beach guy so you know look man we're, we're tropical people i'm just looking at you know, you know? The, the amount of melanin that you have <laughs> you know uh compared to me i'm like we're, we're tropical we're tropical people yeah. you know <laughs> so when the option you know to do that came it was a no-brainer for me you know yeah and so you know we prayed about it you know and she put in her paperwork and she didn't even think she was going to get it because of her seniority Yep. Next thing you know, we got the call, we're coming out here, and we're looking for a place to stay, you know? So, um, because of that, because it wasn't like, I'm gonna go to LA to pursue acting, I'm going to LA to pursue music, I'm going to LA. It's like, you know, we were just, we came here because God brought us out here, you know? Yes. And so, um, whatever happens, happens. And so, like you said, meeting people that actually that are from LA, super cool. It's the people that are transplants, unfortunately, that kind of give that. That kind of bring that this, name, this weirdness, that you vibe, know. Yeah. That's not unfortunate. All. Not, not all. all, of course, you know. Yeah, not, but, obviously not all. But uh, obviously. It's out but, there. But, but you know what? It's everywhere. It is everywhere. There's something here from a gravitational yeah. standpoint. There's a gravity and an element here that, that people want to move towards. Mm -hmm. Before I even get to that, I do want to talk about a little bit about, you know, your, your, your faith-based uh, presentation. To the scene which is um you know if we talk about music and hollywood and everything obviously we know there there are values there that aren't aligned with you know things that we we deem as being the morals and the values that we like to live by yeah. and um being someone that wants to ensure that your faith is directly associated with with your music and your brand is um i, I won't say it's tough uh, within the scene because you know who cares right yeah. you know this is our faith mm. you know why, why, why would we care but also at the same time I, I really commend you for being someone that puts it on the forefront mm. and was that always the structure for milk and honey music obviously through the title through the name it was but you in your you in your shows with a prayer yeah. you know was, was that always something that you knew from a construct from a brand development standpoint that you wanted to do no, I mean, specifically with the prayer at the end of the show, that's something that just, you know, God put on my heart to do after a while. Um, it wasn't planned. It was just something like, okay, this is what I would like you to do, you know, just kind of being connected and in tune with Him. And, and so that's what I just wound up doing, you know, mm. that came. Uh, and it's, it didn't come easy because I was, you know, I just kind of didn't feel 
completely comfortable doing it, you know, because you do have to think about what other people are going to think, you know, and it might turn some people off. But you know, uh, you know, I have to stand by my faith, and I need to kind of push forward, and not really, you know, I I don't judge others, you know, for who they are and what they do, and so you know, hopefully, I can lead by example, you know, when it comes to my faith. You know, it's not perfect. I mess up. I have struggles and deal with things like everyone else. As we all do. You know, but... Um, and again, you know, yeah. Los Angeles gets a bad rap for, you know, some of these disgusting behaviors and these people that are here. And it's, you know, again, like, I call it like Babylon satellite. Mm. But, you know, that has to come from somewhere. Yeah. And, you know, it, it also comes from a place to where I feel like leaves opportunity for an alternate energy yeah. to interject within that and i think that's that's a good thing you know yeah. I'm, I'm not you know I, I feel like we need that you know there's so much debauchery and like the dark world it's very dark i mean you, you don't but, have you know, but that becomes that. that becomes a little bit of like the la attitude when you think about that and you think about the people that are bringing this stuff here they're buying into what i like to call the billboard la right. you know the billboard la is the the unfortunate part of LA that is like the the media the big signs mm -hmm. the Hollywood you know every everything that is unfortunate about the perspective where it really denigrates the the purity of what is actually available here and what is actually supposed to happen here I think you know like this this should be the land of milk and honey you know yeah <laughs> if you sense, think about it I think by me connecting with people like yourself and others that are like-minded in that way we get to bring that mm -hmm. to wherever we go you know and I think you know we're called to be a light you know and so in the best way and I, I like I like this phrase that I heard you know like sometimes we might be the only Bible that people get to read you know mm -hmm. so again you know we all have our struggles we Very all go through our things but you know, we try our best if we're connected, if we're yep. reading our Bible, if we're going to a church that is teaching the Bible, if yep. we're in fellowship. I think all these things help us to kind of bring that energy to a lounge or a club or... Absolutely. When you first arrived here and, I guess, announced the Milk and Honey brand, um, about what... Give me a time frame. When, when was that? It was 2012. Yeah. Yeah, I remember just, you know... Once we moved into our little one-bedroom apartment at the time, you know, setting everything up and just getting online, it's like, all right, we're just gonna go live and play some music, you know, and milk and honey. And then I got a actually a, a friend of mine, uh, Jason Ferg. Um, he was a hip hop artist, you know, rapper, mm -hmm. singer, and we've done some stuff together. Um, his friend, his coworker, uh, was the one who did my logo. And so just, you know, just developing that, you know, that was a process and then printing out some t-shirts and that, you know, was another process and just mm -hmm. like little by little, just kind of, you know, getting that brand kind of out, out a little bit. Now, knowing where your sound came from based on your childhood, talk to me about your sound as a DJ. Now you, you have your brand, you want to push out something that is consistent and what you believe is significant and necessary to the scene that, that you've grown up to love. Um, tell me about the sound that you that you really want to bring to this, because I, I know what it is, yeah. but tell, tell us, tell everybody. That soulful side of it is always going to be there. Mm -hmm. That, um, the music that has, you know, that talks about love, that talks about God, that talks about the spirit. Um, that's kind of like the, the line that runs through, you know, what I play and then I mix that up with the Afro Latin stuff which is the percussion mm -hmm. um, and you know and again like with my background I went to raves and I, so I like the deep house I like you know some tech you know mm -hmm. and stuff like that so if I can incorporate some of that in there as well so it's, it's a little bit of all of that uh, but the main ingredients at least for me is the soulful and the Afro Latin I don't know if you know this about me, but I started off as a techno DJ. Oh. When I first started playing, I, um, my first rave that I went to, I want to say was probably in 1993. Hmm. I'd say starting in 1990, I started to get exposed to um, 
techno and mm -hmm. you know this this whole scene that didn't have an acronym right. at that time. You know, there was no EDM right. at that time. It was just techno mm -hmm. and music underground. And I grew up on a plethora of music as well. You know, my father being a musician, mm -hmm. funk, jazz, you know, atmospheric, orchestral, everything was always around the house. Mm -hmm. You know, from Bon Jovi to The Last Poets, you know, to, to everything. Everything was always in the mm -hmm. house, you know. So, but saying that to say, what, what becomes your DNA as you even source music and approach music and as you start to present that to people, obviously what your upbringing was and that influence was becomes a part of the music that you play. Totally. And that's, you know, the, uh, the signature of, a, of the brand and also bringing in the faith yeah. orientation. How does your, your faith kind of like guide the way you select music, the way you, you kind of choose, the way you present yourself, the way you even move within different events or, or collaborators? As far as the music is concerned, I mean, I'm, I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or what have you, but like I'm more selective. Like I really want to get music now that I know that I'm going to play, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, you know. I don't try and get the hits, if you, if you know. Um, I appreciate it, you know, and I can listen to it. But if I know that something's going to be like super popular, for some reason I tend to kind of go the other way, you know. Um, but I mean, obviously there's a lot of, you know, tracks out there that are familiar, that are popular, and I enjoy, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I know that if I play it, the crowd's gonna, you know, mm -hmm. uh, appreciate it, and, you know, connect with it. Kind of reminds me a little bit about, you know, the vertical brand. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're definitely not, we're not trying to be popular. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not playing, you know, popular music. We, we really feel like there's, again, like I said, there's a responsibility mm -hmm. for us to, to be gatekeepers of this, and deliver to the people the things that they didn't know they wanted because they're not spending time like digging deep and spending hours of their life. They have other things to do. So they come to us as that place of like source yeah. of, of, of release. And for me, I take very much care yeah. to, to really want to ensure that we're, we're doing that, you know, because if not, then we're just a jukebox. Yeah. And I'm also very, very careful about, you know, the lyrics that are in the music, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, because, you know, they do affect you, you know, of course. If, if, you know, there's, it's all, vib yeah. it's all vibrations, man. Yeah. So it's, I want it to be uplifting. I want it to be positive. Um, and yeah, I'm very, again, like I'm very selective. And then I've been blessed over the years to, you know, become friends with some producers that you know they send me music that i get to feature on the show mm -hmm. um and you know again i mean i i'm honest with them you know i send them feedback you know i don't like everything that they put out but there's some things that i do you know yep. and i appreciate them you know trusting me with their with their yep. music yep and um and yeah. you also again want to be a conduit and be someone that represents a certain value you yeah. know in music so that if you're if you're being a conduit to turn people in a certain direction you want to make sure that direction that you're turning them into is going to be positive. Yeah, and that goes with also, I mean, I have guest DJs that come on the show. And again, I mean, I reach out to them. You know, not everyone says yes, but, you know, the ones that I do reach out to is because mm -hmm. I feel like they can bring something to the table that I can enjoy and that <laughs> is positive and uplifting and uh, have something to, you know, share. Well, I'll people. tell you for sure, um, when you extended the invitation to me, you know, for me, it was an immediate yes, because I just figured, perfect, you know, this is an individual that is stand up and really has a, um, a consideration of his spiritual value mm -hmm. and wants to make sure that's first and foremost in his life. So therefore, we already have synergy there. Yeah. So for me, that, that was an easy yes. <laughs> that was a dope mix, by the way. Thank you, man. I yeah. appreciate that. Um, let's talk about that. So let's go, let's go ahead and move on that. And then just talking about music and quality of music. The scene in LA, you know, has been defined by so many people and so many different things. And what we're doing, the quality of music that we like to play within the vertical brand is absolutely just global futurism, period. You know, it is intergalactic, global, human futurism, period. 
we like to make sure that people are getting things that they didn't know they needed. Yeah. And we want to make sure that we're playing music that is just exactly in tune with your human being. Yeah. And it, it is perfectly progressive, you know, and I feel like that's what we should be as a species. We should be progressive. We shouldn't be playing the same stuff over and over again, just as human beings we shouldn't be looking to do the same things over and over again. If you think about growing crops, there's a better way to grow crops. Now there's a, an essential way to grow crops, of course, because if you're gonna start growing corn, look, there's, there's a way to toil the land and ensure that it's fertile enough to, to, to bring health to your crop. Now let's start thinking about new crops and everything else. And if the land starts change based upon weather patterns or anything, are you going to keep doing the same thing or should you adapt and ensure that you're able to adjust and keep giving the people what they need? And we still want to give them corn. So let's make sure we can keep giving them what they need. So we need to adapt what we do to give them what they need. With that said, I really enjoy living on a perspective to where I'm not interested in what's happening. I'm interested in how what's happening is pushing what should be happening forward, hmm. which is very much a, um, an ethos within the DNA of vertical. I want to be progressive. I want to make sure we are like giving people the stuff that they need when they hear us play on the dance floor hmm. and not just the sing along stuff, you yeah. know, like everybody's heard that it's fine. There's, and there's places for that. Sure. But it's not here. Yeah. You and know? there's other people doing it. Exactly. Exactly. Which is fine. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think of, of myself as, that way you're thinking about like farming and crops and you know i see myself as like a seed you know sowing seeds yep you know what you reap you will sow or what you sow you will reap right mm -hmm. and so um yeah why, why not plant all these beautiful seeds because there's so much music out there yep. i mean especially nowadays there's people pumping out tracks you know daily yeah um, multiple times daily yeah. and why not grab a couple of those things that people won't get a chance to hear and absolutely and expose it yeah and, that, and that, that's what excited me when i first started getting into djing was like oh my god i found some stuff that no one nobody else would ever hear before i have to share this you know absolutely I, that's the excitement right exactly it's right just putting that. it to people it was like i have to share this and if i'll talk about this film again for a second a big part of that was talking about a movement that is happening currently the underground where people are seeking out shelter they're seeking respite you know places where they can go to feel that they can express it's all cyclical yeah. everything happens in cycles everything happens in these re repeat cycles it really reminded me of what we were doing in the late 90s and the early aughts the early 2000s where that was just the status quo here in LA mm -hmm. we were um, moving through these warehouses and map points and everything else and that That's was just cool. how you would hear the best music mm -hmm. you know whether it was in a forest or a desert or a random warehouse here in downtown um that's just how we got down so i loved seeing how they were presenting that a little bit and also really showing like how even the current generation gets it as yeah. well you know i do feel like it was coming from one voice one side a little bit in terms of just perspective and and music but I think that's a part of what attracted you to be here, would you say? I think I learned, you know, that because I'm so used to like going to a venue and asking, you know, like going through the process of like, you know, do you, are you looking for a DJ? Do you need, you know, I can bring this to the table. Like what I'm learning more is like, just do it yourself. Like get some good know people around you again that are like-minded that have the same vision and just you know trailblaze you know instead of relying on certain places or you know people i think we just have same. to go out and do it you know same. and i think that that takes a lot of time but when it's done and it's done right then it's a beautiful experience same you know? i really like the point that they made about things getting pushed out to the edge so you're always going to keep pushing the boundaries, yeah. you know, pushing those boundaries. And if you look at America, just the United States, you know, as, as a boundary, East Coast, West Coast, North, South, there's boundaries. Mm -hmm. 
and if you live on a coastal area of the United States, you're on those boundaries already. Right. How did that how did that affect you in terms of once you established your brand here and then you were deciding to maybe move into clubs or doing club DJing like tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, I mean it was, it was it's tough. It was tough, you know, trying to get you know gigs because as a DJ, what you want to do is you want to play in front of people. You, know, you want to play for people, you mm -hmm. know. And it hasn't been the easiest. But again, you know, I have to go back to I didn't choose to come out here. Mm -hmm. you know, I was led out here, mm -hmm. you know. And so, whatever I do, I'm gonna appreciate it. Whatever I do it with, I'm gonna make sure that we're on the same page and enjoy it you know while while it's here that's why I, you know the online thing has been such a blessing because i get to do this whenever i want i can hop on during the week i can hop yep. on on the weekend well it's also you know. important for us to use ourselves as a vessel as a vehicle totally. right totally and that's what no that's what we do that's why i do what i do yeah because you know, just use what vessel. you have to be a vehicle to be a vessel that's right it. that's it and make the connections you know like i'd rather have you know it's always been for me uh, quality over quantity mm -hmm. you know like I'd rather do small things here and there with cool people than be busy seven days a week and not be happy you know? I'll say it's beyond the music always you know what I mean it, yeah. there's so much more than just the music it's, it's those, community right it's yeah fellowship yeah. it's yeah it's, you know, they'll, they'll start to see that hey this is something valuable here and there's a reason why I'm I'm kind of feeling this and I think also as we get older a lot of people don't they, they don't want to they're not Staying out to three in the morning and getting bombed and you know doing other stuff. They have families. Some of them already, you know, are, have jobs and stuff. So if they're gonna come out to see me, I want to make sure that I'm giving them something, you know, worthwhile. Again, you see how we craft things within, you know, the vertical brand, and that's very important to me as well. Which is like, which is why I think we we had like almost instant synergy. That was the connection. Yeah, I go into a vertical event. You, David Montoya was the guest DJ. Mm -hmm. I went to go see him. Mm -hmm. And through that, I met you guys, you know, and just seeing how you guys put it all together, you know, for that event, I was like, oh, these guys are on top of it. You know, these guys Appreciate are you, serious man. about, you know, putting, you know, quality stuff out there. And that Appreciate was the you. attraction, you know. I Appreciate you, man. Seriously, because um, for me, quality is first, you know, and I think that, that, that goes into like our appreciation for the people yeah. that are coming, right. you know, and that's a no-brainer right like who else are you doing it for yeah you know and just the name of uh, just the name alone vertical you know vertical and spiritually where, speaking where are we going you know if <laughs> if my relationship with god which is vertical is off then my relationship with others are going to mm -hmm. be off you know mm -hmm. so when i when i when i put that together i was like oh okay interesting you know like it makes sense you know there is a uh, scripture that talks about that threefold chord yep ecclesiastes Oh, it's, yep, there we go. Ecclesiastes, yeah, yep. Yeah. That threefold chord, man. Uh -huh. um, and where does that go, man? You know, it's, and, and, we, and we need that because, you know, when someone falls, you have someone there to help them up. But yep. when you have three, even better. Come on, man. <laughs> and that third person, <laughs> at least for me. Yeah. You know, guy, so so let's, let's talk a little bit more about your music and how you play. And... Um, just the way you like to like throw down on the dance floor man because i've enjoyed a lot of your sets i only want to bring people to collaborate with us to be a part of the family you know that i feel like i nerd out from a music standpoint and i feel like i love listening to your your music man thanks so when you're when you're throwing down on the dance floor you know what's your intention to make people feel good, you know. <laughs> um, it's never planned because I don't plan my sets. Yeah. I mean, um, it all depends on the vibe of the room, you know. And so, um, yeah, just whatever is on my heart, you know. Whatever, maybe I heard something that day or that week, or you know, I I'm always, you know, flipping through my music and taking stuff out and putting stuff in and mm -hmm. you know music to me is timeless so I can maybe pick something from a few years ago and play it now and still you know 
relevant and mm -hmm. people still mm -hmm. like, oh, I never mm -hmm. heard that before. Oh, that came out like four years ago. Mm -hmm. you know? The importance of us injecting our faith into what we do, I think is very valuable because that, that also governs how we present what we do. And I think that's something that, that is very special. And you know, that, that leaves you at, at a very outlying category within yeah. this scene, you know, because that's not something that everybody appreciates, but that's a fact, you know, you but know. it is what it is. And I'm OK with that yeah. personally. You know? yeah. That doesn't change the music. That doesn't change the quality of, of your brand no. and, you know, how people can can hear you play. And that's life and that's a given. You know, some people are going to like you and some people are not. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just how it goes. And so as long as, you know, we keep it real to what we do and who we are, I think you know integrity is a part of that absolutely and so you know we're not hurting anyone we're not no, trying not to at all. Yeah. you know do anything you know mean or evil to anyone so you know it's just and this house music thing is all is and was always supposed to be about coming together yep. you know and no matter you know where you come from no matter who you are what you do you know absolutely the music is what kind of brings us all together and we can all get along you know we can all get along absolutely absolutely and when, when i think about that that also makes me think about, you know, to, to your point about your brand, what were your aspirations for Milk and Honey Music? I didn't have any. It was just one of those things that, you know, the main thing is to bring people to the land of Milk and Honey, mm -hmm. you know, and that's bringing an, an awareness mm -hmm. to the faith because, you know, for me, once it's said and done here on this earth, there's another place. There's two places. And so uh, we can have that conversation. It's never forced. We can, we can definitely have that conversation. No, it's never forced. Because I, I believe um, Bible is an acronym. Yeah. Have basic you ever? Basic instructions before leaving earth. I, be me. I believe it's <laughs> basic instructions before life everlasting. Oh. And we, 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 can, we can definitely talk another, about that. Another yeah, uh, conversation. Yeah, 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 exactly, man. Seriously. How can people find you? How can they find what you're sharing? How can they connect with you? Uh, you can go to social media, Facebook or Instagram, Milk and Honey Music or Esteban, DJ Esteban. Um, go to djesteban.com. It's my website. djesteban.com? Yeah. DJ Spell that for the people that might not be familiar. So DJ. Uh, Esteban, E S T E B A N dot com. Okay. Um, we'll, put, we'll put it right here. Oh, thank you. Right here. <laughs> it'll, it'll go right here. Trust me. And uh, yeah, just social media. Just yeah. type in Milk and Honey Music and I should pop up somewhere. Fantastic. Yeah. Really appreciate you, man. Well, thanks for having me, man. Like, I appreciate seriously. having this nice conversation. I didn't think it was going to be it's this. It's, it's yeah, it's but it was nice. It was yeah. natural. It was organic. So Absolutely, thank you. That's the way it is. Yeah. I look forward to doing some cool stuff oh, with you. We, we are done for life. There it is. There is. You heard it here. Yeah, yeah, we're done for you life. heard it here. <laughs> Alright brother, appreciate you. Thank you sir.
Stop.